but that doesn't work because at the origin it's not defined. Yes? Ah, so if you take a curve that makes a figure eight, then indeed my proof over there is false. So I kind of tricked you. You know, it's not actually correct. So if the curve does a figure eight, then what you would do is you would actually cut it into its two halves, and for each of them you would apply Green's theorem. And then you would still get that, you know, if the curve is zero, then this line integral is zero, that one is also zero, so the sum is zero. Okay. Uh, small details that you don't really need to worry too much about, but indeed, if you want to be careful with details, then my proof is not quite complete. But the conclusion is still true. Okay. Uh, let's move on. So, I want to tell you how to prove Green's theorem. Because, you know, it's such a strange formula that, you know, where can it come from, possibly? I mean, so let me remind you, first of all, the statement we want to prove is that the line integral along a closed curve of m dx plus n dy is equal to the double integral of our region inside of nx minus my dA. And you know, let's simplify our lives a bit by proving easier statements. So actually, the first observation will actually prove something easier, namely that the line integral, let's see, of m dx along a closed curve is equal to the double integral of our region inside of minus m sub y dA. Okay, so that's the special case where n is zero, where you have only an x component for your vector field. Now, why is that good enough? Well, the claim is if I can prove this, I claim you will be able to do the same thing to prove the other case where there's only a y component. And then, if you add them together, you'll get the general case. Let me explain. Okay, so a similar argument, which I will not do to save time will show, so it will be just the same thing, but switching the roles of x and y, that if I integrate along a closed curve and dy, then I'll get the double integral of, sorry, n sub x dA. And so now if I have proved these two formulas separately, then if you sum them together, we'll get the correct statement, well, let me not write it, uh, we get Green's theorem. Okay? So we've simplified, simplified our task a little bit. We'll just be trying to prove the case where there's only an X component. So let's do it. Well, we have another problem, which is the region that we're looking at, the curve that we're looking at, might be very complicated. You know, if I give you, let's say I give you, I don't know, a curve that does something like this, well, you know, it will be kind of tricky to set up a double integral of other region inside. So maybe we first want to look at curves that are simpler, you know, that will actually allow us to set up the double integral easily. So the second observation so that was the first observation. The second observation is that we can decompose R into simpler regions.
So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say that I have you know, a region and I'm going to cut it into two. So I will have R1 and R2. And then of course I need to have the curves that go around them. So I had my initial curve C was going around everybody. And I have curves C1 that goes around R1 and C2 goes around R2. Okay, so what I would like to say is if we can prove that the statement is true, so let's see, for C1 and also for C2, then I claim we can prove the statement for C. How do we do that? Well, we just add these two equalities together. Okay, why does that work? There's something fishy going on because C1 and C2 have this piece here in the middle that's not, in, that's not there in C. So if you add the line integral along C1 and C2, you get you know, these unwanted pieces. But the good news is actually you go twice through that edge in the middle. See, it appears once in C1 going up and once in C2 going down. So in fact, when you will do the work, you know, when you will sum the work, uh, you will add these two guys together, they will cancel. Okay, so the line integral along C will be then, it will be the sum of the line integrals on C1 and C2, and that will equal, therefore, the double integral over R1 plus the double integral over R2, which is the double integral over R of negative my. <laughs>